Hi, this is Mark Hibben for Technomicon Media with a quick video tour of the Gigabyte X79 UD5 BIOS and overclocking features. And the first thing you notice when you get into the BIOS is the new 3D interface, this picture of the motherboard that allows you to select a lot of different functionality and you can actually make a significant number of changes from within this interface. You, you can even reposition windows, and here I moved one window over so that I could look at the status for the processor and the motherboard. It actually has quite a bit of information, the temperature of the processor, as well as the temperatures of the PCH and what they call the system temperature. CPU fan speed. And it works a lot like a normal Windows interface. You can select a lot of different functions and make changes or just look at status. The PCI configuration shows which slot boots first for the video card. And this is the uh, rear panel serial ATA controller, which is controlled by one of the Marvell controller chips, as well as USB 2 and 3 support. Once again, you can reposition these windows. And then clicking on the serial ATA ports at the back of the motherboard show you the Intel and uh, Marvell serial ATA ports. And you can even spin this thing around and get a look at the rear of the motherboard. Clicking on the uh, power module brings up the uh, three so-called 3D voltage and power interface. You can make voltage and current settings. Here we have everything set to auto because in our uh, sweet spot overclock mode, really don't need to make any voltage changes. And that sweet spot is at 4.37 gigahertz with a 125 megahertz base clock. If you click on save and exit, you can, uh, you can save or not and exit the system without ever actually going into a conventional BIOS. You can get to a more conventional BIOS layout simply by clicking on one of the buttons at the bottom of the screen. And here we clicked on the system button to look at system status. We're in the F8 BIOS. Uh, for BIOS features, we're booting from the Marvell RAID array. For peripherals, we're using IDE mode for the serial ATA controller for the Intel controller. MIT stands for Motherboard Intelligent Tweaker, and it's where all the settings are collected together for overclocking, changing frequency, and voltage. Here in MIT current status, we're showing our, our sweet spot status with the non-turbo maximum at 4 gigahertz and the turbo maximum at 4.375 gigahertz with the 125 megahertz base clock. And I'm just stepping through the various screens, showing the Marvell setup screen with uh, RAID mode for one of the controllers. Power management. And then save, or, save and exit. And there's also this nice QFlash utility, which allows you to flash the BIOS from within the BIOS. All you need is a USB thumb drive, and you can update from that drive. Very convenient. Notice that uh, the uh, pointer got kind of ghosted for a second there. That's uh, one of the user interface quirks of the new BIOS. Next, I just want to step through the procedures for setting up our so-called sweet spot overclocking. And here I'm starting off with a completely stock configuration all the settings are default settings as they would come when you first boot up the motherboard. 
First you go into Advanced Frequency Settings and change the clock control mode to manual mode. Then you increase the gear ratio to 1.25 and that changes the base clock frequency to 125 megahertz. Then you change the CPU clock ratio to 35 and that takes you up to 4.375 gigahertz in turbo mode. We're using XMP memory so we want to enable that with one of the default profiles built into the motherboard. Then we manually increase the multiplier to 16 which is as high as we can go. If we increase to 18, that takes us over the 2.133 GHz limit. Next we click on Advanced CPU Core Features, click on CPU Thermal Monitor, and disable it. And that's all there is. That's all the settings changes that are required for the OC Sweet Spot. We'll back out of the uh, various submenus. and save and exit. After making these changes, I usually like to check things out with Performance Test 7. And here I'm just going to run all the tests. And while I'm doing that, I also have a couple of other utilities running. CPU-Z and CPU-ID's hardware monitor CPU-Z gives me more or less instantaneous readout on clock frequency as well as core voltage, whereas CPU-ID hardware monitor shows me how much power the chip is drawing as well as the temperature that it's reaching. So we're going to run these tests and we won't, we won't actually show all of the tests, but we'll show some of the tests just to give you a feel for the kinds of tests that PT7 performs. In addition to the math-based tests, there's also a lot of graphics tests, simple 2D drawing, more complex two-dimensional drawing, image processing, here we're showing image rotation and various image enhancements and filtering. There's various scaling operations that are performed on images. And then various user interface and Windows type controls. PT7 performs a battery of 3D animation tests. We'll just show you a couple of them to give you a feel for the kinds of tests that are performed. Then after PT7 completes all its tests, it gives you a composite score as well as a bar graph summary of all the individual test scores. And here I'm loading a, a previous result for the sweet spot overclocking just so that I can compare with the test I just performed and ensure that all the results have come out as I expect them to. And you see very good agreement. There's a slight difference in some of the scores. There's a certain amount of random variation in this test from test to test. But generally, if all the settings are right and if everything's working right, the test score should agree with the previous result, and in this case, they do. In this case, we perform the short version of the PT7 test. There is an option for a long version, and we do recommend it. For instance, the temperature in this case for the CPU package only got up to about 57 degrees. Normally, it'd be in the low 60s. We think the long test is a better test for stability and overclocking.